Right, so in 1.5 we got the new modems and with that came the channels. So the channels, as I've already said, um, Redmint.send uses to um, for the IDs of each computer, so to make it safe as before. But now that we have channels and we can directly open channels, we can listen on other computers' IDs. So what we're going to do is um, show that Redmint.send is hackable and then uh, after that, we'll go over some um, encryption and stuff like that that you can do to prevent that. So I'll start by um, just uh, showing this. I'll be explaining as I go along. Uh, stop me anytime you want. So that just gets our uh, modem so we can interact with it through peripheral instead. So I've set this uh, modem to open on channel 2, which um, I'll be sending to uh, from the other computer next to mine. And so I'll get this one to listen on um, for channel 2. So any messages sent to the computer uh, listen on channel 2, which will be ID2 uh, through the Redmi API, um, will be uh, printed by this computer. I should have really done this in a file, I think, but never mind. I'll go with the little prompt for now. Yeah, hold on a second while I put this in file instead. Uh, modem tr uh, dot transmit basically just sends a message through um, through the modem. So it's like Redmit dot send, except it's um, they both now use uh, channels. So broadcast now uses the uh, highest channel possible, which is something in uh, sixty five thousand or something. And um, peripheral uh, Redmit dot send um, now uses a computer ID, but you can ch uh, through modem dot transmit you have to send the yeah, so the ID you want to transmit on and the message, I think. And you have to have the modem open on that channel. Did I say something wrong? <laughs> Isn't that not? <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think you can only have one channel open for when you're sending. So when you want to, when you want to transmit, you can only have one channel open. Yeah, I should look a little wiki. But I haven't really done much of that. Okay, so I've set this to listen on um, channel two, 
So I'll now go over to this little computer and you'll see the message I'm sending through Redmit.send. So this is showing you how um, easily it is now to uh, hack into Redmit.send. So all I'm doing is actually just doing brennet.send uh, to ID2 and then the message. So it's quite, um, it's quite, hold on a second. Yeah, so it's uh, quite easy to hack these messages. Um, so that's, that's a big problem for any um, password locks or anything via Redmit, because you can now easily... <laughs> yeah, so you can also get this to listen on more than uh, one channel, so let me just do that quickly. Yeah, I've got to start to say about that. So, yeah, so the first message we got is um, from channel two, and the other one is to channel six, and you've now crashed it. Right, so um, Crew will probably explain more about uh, Rednet and the new uh, modems and channels. <laughs> you can record from the taste it's a bit strange. Anyway, um, you can, so I'll start talking more about uh, games and how this can be used in games, which is a lot, um, and I'll leave Crew to do the rest of the explaining if you don't fully understand something. So. Um, with the new uh, modems, something that I've seen before is someone tried to make an MMORPG and because they were just sending remnant.send to lots and lots of different clients, so this really applies to more than two computers, you have to send remnant.send to more than two clients. So because of that, they were um, sending masses of uh, remnant data, which was crashing and very are lagging very badly, which is the same as the uh, thing which you can crash um, Rednet with a really, really long string. Mm -hmm. So to get around that, you can now just use uh, the modem.transmit on a certain channel and get all of the uh, clients to all of the clients to listen on, on one uh, channel. So instead of sending loads and loads of um, Rednet or send, you can now just send over one channel. But the thing is, it's still um, unprotected. So you, you won't be able to um, protect anything over Rednet anymore without any encrypting it. So I'll move on to the next thing, which is the encryption and how you can do that. So um, if I just LS here. So I've worked on something for a little bit and unfortunately, my um, encryption library didn't work yet. So I'm still working on trying to get that to work. So for now, I found something on, on the forums which I haven't tested. So I'm not sure if this is going to work or not. But basically, what this does, if I just edit it,
oh, it, I press the wrong button there. Um, it works similarly to uh, receive and send, and um, it loads SHA256, which is the hash, and it hashes a password. Now, you don't have to do um, specific, you don't have to use the SHA256. You could just um, put a random string of characters in salt. But this works to, uh, like a um, public key encryption where the salt is known on uh, server and client. So what it does is when you get, when you want to send data, it will send it through the normal redmit.send, but I've just shown it's uh, hackable. But instead it will encrypt it with the uh, password you set in the, um, in the, in the client. But so you might be thinking, well, that's useless if you can just edit the client and look at the password. So ideally you would have um, like, a, like a handshake on the server, which would then um, generate a random uh, sort for both the client and server to use for the rest of that. So that would be like a session key. Um, and then with the session key, you could use that as a sort, which would, so it would be a completely random um, string of numbers and letters which would um, be generated at the startup through the server or in the client, but they'd both have to be able to share it. So you, you, there would be a slight chance that um, a hacker could get into it. But um, as long as you're um, encrypting data um, over the red net as something simple as this, although you'd need to change the password ideally for each person, um, you can create a secure way to send messages. Um, the only problem we have is that Lua is quite slow at encrypting. So for something like this, this is just a simple encryption. If you're actually going to the encrypt library, it's not very complex and just um, it's, acts more like a cipher and doesn't really use the bit API at all. So but something as good as um, AES would would be very, very slow. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, but the good thing is that now the bit library that um, most encryption libraries use is now based in Java, so not through Lua itself, which is an upside and so it works slightly better, but I think there's um, some strange issues with it going on where it's not exactly perfect but that might be just me and my and my uh, attempts to get it to work but yeah so encryption is good and it would solve the uh, issue of trying to um, hack rednet but it would also it's quite slow so for uh, games and things which have to send lots of data very fast it's not very ideal so it's only useful for authentication, really. Um, you, there's another solution, I suppose, to this, where you could use um, random channels, where you could switch the channels every so often. But the, that's probably worse, because you can easily um, see how the program is, is deciding which channel to switch to. And once you've worked that out, there's, there's no, it's very easy to keep hacking it. So it's it's only temporary while the while you work out how it works, and if you're releasing it to the public, the program, then it's not going to last very long. So, um, so random channels is sort of okay, but you can also also if because of the rednet the way rednet API works is that if you're sending on the same ID as a nearby computer, you will accidentally send any messages to that computer which can be a bit of an issue. And especially if you're thinking of setting up uh, private channels, such as maybe 21 for FTP, um, you could accidentally clash with computer ID 21. So um, there's not really an easy fix for the RedNet insecurity. Um, so I hope I haven't been too boring and um, is there anything you want me to go over about the new API? Uh, does the modem message uh, return more arguments now? 
uh, when you did the test, it showed top uh, as the side than a few other arcs. Is that right? Uh, yeah, so the modem transmit message, um, when you receive the message, you will now get um, the side it came from, which is useful if you're trying to figure out if you're managing multiple uh, modems, which you can do before. And uh, you also get the uh, sender ID and the, or what used to be the sender ID and the uh, channel you wish to return to. So, and the distance and the message. So it's a lot to remember. Um, the but the channels that you receive, one which is the channel it was sent on, and the one that you should reply on, um, can be easily um, faked because they're not. They're just sent um, from the whoever sends it can put in whatever they want as the values. So that's why it's easy now to hack the rednet.send. Okay, so there's a 128. Uh channel limit to be open. Is that per modem or per computer? There's a 128 channel limit per modem. So you can have up to probably five modems. Um, well, six modems, one on each side. Yeah, but I suppose, yeah. I haven't tried placing it in front of the computer, but yeah, I suppose you could do six. Or you could uh, link two computers over a modem and extend it. So really, you could have as many modems as you want open. So you could have the Although there's a limit, which is 65,000 or something, which is the channel limit. I suppose that's it then. Um, you can listen for written messages by just opening it, um, the uh, modem and then uh, just using the pull event. Yeah, so you have to use the event, which is the modem message. Written message doesn't exist anymore. So the normal written API just sends it to that specific channel, not the ID, right? Uh, yeah, it just uses a channel now instead of an ID. Uh, yeah, well, you can do that, or what I do is just um, put it inside a table, which makes it much easier. Yeah, a table is definitely easier since you don't have the five bars, instead you don't have one. So that's it? Uh, yeah, but I haven't really got much else to prepare. So I suppose, uh, yeah, good. It's your turn, human. Okay, everybody's up for